Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 16. So in this question we've been given four graphs. The first two look quite similar in their form. x squared plus y squared is 49 and x squared plus y squared is 25. You should know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared is a circle centered at the origin with a radius r. If we compare our graphs to this we've got x squared plus y squared equals 49 which is the same as x squared plus y squared equals 7 squared. So this is a circle, centre 0, 0, with radius 7. We've also got x squared plus y squared equals 25, which is the same as x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, so that's a circle, centre 0, 0, radius 5. So the two circles here have radii 5 and 7 units. This will be useful later on in the question. Now let's look at the next two graphs, y equals negative root 3x and y equals x over root 3. The first one of these has a negative gradient, so it should be clear that this one here is the positive gradient, and this one here is the negative gradient. We're going to look at the one with the positive gradient first. So the gradient of this line is 1 over root 3. So we should be able to draw a gradient triangle for this line, where the change in y is 1, and the change in x is root 3. For this question, we're going to need to find this angle marked in here, A. If we label the sides of the triangle, we've got the hypotenuse here, We've got the opposite, which is 1, and the adjacent, which is root 3. So we can write down that tan of the angle equals the opposite, which is 1, divided by the adjacent, which is root 3. So a equals inverse tan of 1 over root 3. And this is an exact value you should recognise. a will be 30 degrees. So we can mark 30 degrees onto the diagram here, and also here. Now let's look at the second line. If we take the gradient of the first line and the gradient of the second line, and then multiply them together, you'll end up with negative 1. This means they're negative reciprocals of each other, so both lines must be perpendicular. This tells us there's a 90 degree angle between the two lines. Since we know one of these angles on the diagram is 30 degrees, this angle in here must be 60 degrees, and also this one here. We're now ready to try and find some of the areas. Let's start with area A. To find this area, I'm going to do the area of the large circle, take away the area of the small circle first. So pi times 7 squared, remember the radius was 7, subtract pi times 5 squared for the smaller circle. This would give me the area of the outer ring, but I don't want the whole of that outer ring, I only want 90 degrees of that, which is one quarter of it. So if I multiply this by a quarter, I get the area of A. So this is equal to one quarter of 49 pi minus 25 pi, which is 1 quarter of 24 pi, and a quarter of 24 pi is 6 pi. So the area of the section A is 6 pi. Now let's look at B. We can see clearly the angle for section B is 30 degrees, so it's just a sector of a circle. 30 divided by 360 is the same as a 12th, so we need a 12th of the inner circle. The area of the inner circle is just pi times 5 squared, so we need a 12th of pi times 5 squared which is a 12th of 25 pi, which is 25 pi over 12. So that's the area of B. The question asks us to look at the ratio of the area of A to the area of B. So the area of A is 6 pi, and the area of B is 25 pi over 12. If we multiply both sides of this by 12, on the left, 12 times 6 pi is 72 pi, and on the right, the 12 will cancel, so it's just 25 pi. You can now cancel pi from both sides, and you'll get 72 to 25. So the question asks us for the values of A and B, and they are 72 and 25. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.